Okay, so it's uh, 3 o'clock here on the East Coast of the U.S., and I figure we might as well get started. I want to welcome everybody to Shindig. Uh, today we'll be discussing uh, how to develop, uh, how we all develop district-wide visions for education technology, and we'll be discussing that with Andrew Marsnick. But the real reason that we're using Shindig is the ability to do small group work, and, and I'd, like you to, uh, I'd like to encourage you to try that right now. Um, if you click on the avatar of another person, you can have a, a video conference just with that person, or you can form groups of, of three, four, or, or five people. So uh, for a couple of minutes, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just click on another person's icon and then get into a discussion. To, uh, ask them where they come from, why they got into education, or possibly um, what is the ed tech policy in their school? Are they a one-to-one -one school? or um, do, they, do they allow mobile devices, or is it a BYOD school? So let's do that for a couple minutes to give you a chance to uh, try out going into small groups, and then uh, and then I'll bring Andy up and introduce him. Uh, so I'm going to come back down, and if again, if you have questions, you can ask questions. If you want to raise your hand, if you need to me, I'll see your hand is raised. But in the meantime, click on another person's icon and uh, get into a conversation. Okay, I think uh, you've, you've had a chance to try this out. Um, I saw that various groups were being formed, so that's that's great. Um, so now, uh, introducing uh, Andrew, he's the Director of Technology for the Grafton Public Schools, as, as, as you can see on your screen. Um, one of the interesting things is he has successfully introduced one-to-one uh, -one initiatives and, and iOS, iPad initiatives, that have significantly impacted student achievement, both school-wide and district-wide. And then he's written about both his experience and research that he's done on other schools that have been successful. He's written a, a really cool book for Corwin called The One-to-One -One Roadmap, Setting the Course for Innovation in Education. And he speaks na nationwide. So I'm going to bring him up. Um, I'm going to pull myself down, um, bring him up, and then I'm going to bring up his presentation. Actually, so Andrew, before um, before I pre bring up your presentation, um, just uh, wel welcome back. Well, thank you for Can having you me? me. It's great. Yeah, be, yeah, great to be here again, and uh, I really love this forum. Uh, it's not just a kind of like you said; it's not just a uh, passive webinar. It's it, it allows you the opportunity to be engaging and interactive and and collaborative all at once. So I really like this forum, and and glad to be here again talking about one to one. Okay. So let me uh, let me call on down and I'll bring your your slides up. All right, take two. Uh, so thank you all for being with us here today. Um, uh, I'm excited to talk about not just one to one, but uh, my experience in working with technology and education uh, from a very broad perspective, uh, working with K-12 school districts um, in in many capacities as a, a district technology specialist uh, as a teacher. Um, and as a director of technology and leading initiatives and leading uh, successful initiatives forward. Um, so a little bit about me, uh, I, as uh, Mitch alluded to, I, I just finished a book on Roadmap, Setting the Core for Ed Innovation and Education through Corwin Press. Uh, it currently only has one, uh, one re review on Amazon, and it's from one of my best friends. So there's still plenty of copies out there. So, so please go get it and review it. That'd be great. Uh, I have a personal blog at andrewmarsinic.com. Uh, as mentioned before, I'm a director of technology at Grafton Public Schools in uh, uh, almost central western Mass, about 40 minutes uh, west of Boston. And I've been blogging with Edutopia. Edutopia is, uh, is run through the George Lucas Educational Foundation. is a great resource for a variety of uh, A12 spectrum uh, in many different arenas. And uh, I've been, so I've been writing with them for several years, and uh, and yeah, and I, I just uh, I just finished my first publication, and uh, I'm excited to uh, be working on a second publication uh, with Mickey Corso, uh, and uh, and Russ Caliglia. Uh, we're we're looking into working around the idea of student voice, uh, so I'm excited about uh, getting to work with these two guys and and, and getting to uh, getting to write again. So, all right, so we'll do the next slide. There we go. 
All right, uh, just to give you a, a little bit about uh, the school I currently work in. Uh, I work at uh, Grafton, Grafton High School. Uh, well, this is our this is our primarily our one to one. Uh, we're not a district wide run to one, but this is our, our district one pro our, our one to one uh, iPad program. So we have uh, uh, roughly 900 iPad Air 2s uh, in grades 9 through 12, uh, and that also includes teachers. Uh, we are a Google Apps for Education institution. So we have Google Apps for Education across the district for all teachers. Uh, students, we have uh, Google Apps for EDU, all the apps open for grades uh, 7, uh, or actually 6 through 6 through 12. Uh, and grade through uh, 5 have simply Google Drive. Uh, accessibility. We use uh, Calendar's uh, mobile device management system, and this allows us to do a variety of things. This allows us to um, basically manage and, and enroll all of the iPads, uh, all of our MacBooks that we have throughout the district. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit more specifically later about how this helps with the, uh, the management process uh, for the iPad specifically and how it's worked really well for us. Every classroom in our um, and our high school has a mounted projector uh, with Apple TV. Um, so the teachers are to mirror their iPad and kind of teach uh, wirelessly without having to be constrained or tethered to the front of the room. Um, our, our program right now, we are on a three-year Apple equity lease. So there's, there's no, no, no time I've ever talked about one-to-one -one where the economics question has never come up. Uh, so if you're interested in learning about the economics, I won't talk about spreadsheets too much, but it is a crucial part uh, in, in figuring out uh, how you're going to not only plan your one-to-one -one initiative or even your small still or, or stagger your technology initiative, but how does your technology look and in, in how is it funded in, in four to five years? Um, and so there's a lot to take into consideration when planning a technology initiative uh, for year one, but also having in mind years two, three, and four, uh, and, and also realizing that technology uh, moves pretty quickly, thinking that five years ago we had the iPad 1. And if you've seen what the iPad 1 looks at compared to the current model, uh, it's changed pretty dramatically. So there's there's always the, the, the idea of when I'm planning around uh, technology initiatives budgetarily and fiscally, uh, as I'm putting something in the buy column, I'm also thinking about it three years out and how I'm going to replace that specific device or that specific set of devices that I purchased. And so I'm always thinking uh, thinking ahead with that. Um, and the final, final piece there, we have a uh, student-run Genius Bar. So this is a program that uh, four years ago I started at Burlington High School, uh, and it's since expanded to several other schools around Massachusetts and around uh, actually the country. Um, and so basically what this is, is this is a course created off of Apple's Genius Bar model. So if you've ever been into an Apple store on a Saturday morning, uh, you'll notice one-to-one -one technology support that's uh, uh, consistent and it's uh, helpful. And we wanted to basically, when we were rolling out iPads and when you know, Grafton was rolling out 100 iPads, we realized that our district-wide capacity with having roughly four uh, district-wide technology uh, personnel, that the day-to-day -day of a one-to-one -one required that there be daily support uh, and consistent support that was uh, actively engaged throughout the throughout the time of school. So initially, when we came up with this concept, it was about getting um, a lot of basically a lot of tier one uh, issues where we had, um, you know, the Wi-Fi wouldn't connect, or somebody couldn't download an app, or the device needed to be reset and restarted. And so, something that where the kids were actually taking the course, they were they were actually engaging in customer service, engaging in critical thinking skills, with having to think on their feet come up with a decision pretty quickly as far as what do I do? Do I keep playing with this problem or do I send uh, the customer on their way with a, with a plan B uh, and then a, a, a chance to, to follow up? Additionally, we also, uh, we also had kids then begin creating resources, so the course evolved uh, into the kids creating and building resources, much like uh, uh, Khan Academy. We tried to create that for uh, you know, all of our programs, all of our applications that we use whether they threw a screencast or, or simple scripts you could access uh, immediately. Um, so the Student Genius Bar uh, in, in most of the one-to-one uh, -one initiatives and large-scale technology initiatives that I've run has been one of the, the highlights, uh, not only from a learning uh, perspective, but from 
um, encouraging kids to possibly find a career path and, and not just in not just in IT, but in uh, computer science um, and, and a variety of other uh, arenas where they could uh, explore their passions uh, in, in a free space that was open to a lot of these a lot of these uh, different career paths. All right, so we'll go to this slide. So one of the biggest questions I always get asked uh, about one-to-one -one programs is, why did you pick the iPad? Um, and the, my answer is, is it, it varies. It varies varied in 2011 uh, because the iPad was kind of new. Um, it had all the components that would really um, enhance a lot of learning and a lot of skill sets. Uh, and it was mobile, and it was uh, in a nice form factor that worked well within the context in the context of education. Additionally, it also boasted a, a really solid battery life. Uh, kids could use it throughout the school day, and we didn't have to worry about plugging all in class. So those were the those were the answers in 2011. My answers have dramatically changed now in 2015 as the market has caught up uh, to what Apple has established in 2011 with the iPad 2 and how that's greatly changed. Now we have Chromebooks. Now we have uh, all different types of tablets. We have all different types of, of laptops that are that are thinner, that are faster, uh, that are more mobile. So when I'm talking about one-to-one, -one, I'm not specifically just talking about the iPad. Uh, the iPad is a great tool for education, but it's not the only one that's out there. And I think when when you're future thinking and thinking about where you're going with, with technology and what you want to do with it, uh, the reason why I called the, the book The Roadmap is because there's no one set blueprint for every school. There are certain components of this blueprint in which you can, you can do it, but there's so many different variables uh, across all the, the educational landscape. Uh, we're talking about budgetary, we're talking about school size, we're talking about equity, we're talking about access at home to Wi-Fi and broadband connections. So there's a lot of variables that come into play in order to find the right blueprint for you. So what I'm talking about today is more of a broader perspective on how you change culture and how you shift culture around these devices rather than just slapping a bunch of iPads into a classroom and expecting magic to happen. Um, it doesn't. <laughs> the magic doesn't, doesn't quite happen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of an interactive piece. And so what I want to hear from everyone is just why, why one to one or why do you feel that every student in a respective classroom, whether it's, you know, across the K-12 spectrum or just in high school or middle school or elementary school, why should you consider having a one-to-one -one, uh, environment where every student has access uh, to, to a device? So if everyone would just pair up, that's just clicking on someone else's uh, icon and have a brief discussion on why, uh, why, why you would go one-to-one. -one. And Andy, do you um, do you want me to bring you down then? And do you want to vote and, and talk to the different people also while they're, while they're having the dis? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll bring you down, and yeah. um, maybe you can encourage some of the people. So, and you know, if you're talking with them, see which ones you can encourage come back up to stage when you come back to talk talk about it with everybody. Okay. okay. All right. I'll 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 bring you down. Hi. So, um, so I, I saw you talking with some of the people. Also, uh, what what were some of the things that that you noticed as you were well, talking with people? There were some of the kind of, yeah, some of the, the segue I think was um, was interesting about the uh, and but I think kind of thinking about some. Uh, I was talking specifically to Alicia about changing up their their platform. Uh, they've been one to one for a while, uh, and and looking at the kind of the, the momentum going forward and, and how they want to uh, how they want to maybe think about what the next phase of devices is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we didn't get we got cut off there about specifically about the why. Um, but I, I'll entertain if anyone else wants to uh, jump up on the stage here and, and share their their why story and how they got the initiative started. OK, well, so do you want is there anybody specifically you want me to bring up right now? Um, I so you could say, you raise your hand if you want to and share your why story. Okay. And since you were talking with, raise your hand by, not 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 necessarily like this, more like uh, on the uh, raise your hand underneath your icon. Um, but but I could also, since you were talk, talking with Elisa before, you want, I can just bring her up. 
Um, yeah. So what, why don't I why don't I try that? Okay. All right, Elise, do you want to share your, your why, your why one-to-one, -one or why you, why you think one-to-one -one is, is, is important? Sure. Um, well, we didn't discuss that earlier, but uh, the reason I think it's important is part of the issue. Right now, we're not one-to-one -one in our lower school, but we are in our middle and upper school, and having access to devices is very important, and also having the students comfortable with their devices is important. Um, one of the biggest, I guess, roadblocks for our lower school is not having, not having the devices when you need them. So it's something that we've discussed about going one to one in lower school as well. And I'm curious if anyone else is one to one in lower school, or if you even work in those environments. Anyone? Anyone? All right, we'll definitely touch upon the, the lower schools and, and, and talk about looking at uh, more of the K-12 spectrum on how we, how we get these, these opportunities into, into all, different, uh, all different levels. Let's get the slide. So if you want to go to the next slide, Mitch. Great. So a little bit, uh, when we were planning, uh, in all the initiatives I've been a part of where we were planning, um, Planning a one to one or planning a, a, a smaller scale uh, initiative. Uh, these are some of the things we were looking at initially. Uh, but I want to even go back before I talk about the why. And and it's it's important that uh, all technology decisions, as with any decision made within a school, is done so in a collective manner. Um, we didn't spend too long with too many uh, like a, a committee that that looked at over over a course of a year. But we looked at uh, we had a committee that was built uh, with every stakeholder in the district. Uh, and that's really important as far as getting everyone's input because this can never be, uh, technology can never be a, a top-down decision from a tech director uh, or a superintendent. It needs to have collective input uh, so that everyone in the district, everyone actually owns, owns the program and they own the technology initiative. Um, so this is something that I think is, is, is really important. And when I say all stakeholders, I'm talking about teachers, students, um, everyone from every department, uh, all K-12 stakeholders, uh, parents, uh, community members, school committee members. Uh, you really want to get everyone's input on why they think technology is, it has a place in education. Uh, and more importantly, why one-to-one -one and why access for every student is important. So. Going back to the uh, going back to the why, uh, what we what we wanted to do is provide access and opportunities. And I've I've talked about this. I've wrote about this for for a long time. And the one thing that technology enables is access and opportunities uh, for students. And specifically at Grafton High School, we have uh, having a one to one uh, uh, initiative. What I, some of the things I've heard from students is the fact that having access to an iPad is not just that they can check their email or they can access Google Docs or they can get all these different apps, but it's more specifically, uh, they have the ability to personalize their own learning. Uh, and this allows them to literally tailor uh, how they want to learn, how they want to work within the context of a school day, uh, really manage their time, really organize their learning in a way that's going to help and shape the way they do in, in, in higher ed and beyond. Um, one of the, the biggest things I've always said is that, you know, some of the, some of the uh, critics of one-to-one -one say that, well, you know, one-to-one -one is not reality in, in, in higher ed, and, and sometimes it's not reality in, in the work because it's more of a bring-your-own technology, and kids can pick the, pick the platform and provide, uh, provide whatever device they, they want. And, and so that's, well, that, that's a very, very strong point. The, the, the point we're talking about with one-to-one -one iPads is we're getting kids prepared for more of the workflow and more of the productivity around it. Uh, we're getting them to you know, understand how to really organize and focus uh, around a device that's going to be pretty much part of their their educational careers and and their and their professional as they move forward. So we're giving them access to a device, and we know that they're going to be initially. We know that they're going to have 
uh, a lot of different ways in which they can access different parts of the pieces of information at, at one time. We know they're going to have access to chat features. Uh, we we open those up. We don't we don't block too many things that are um, outside the realm of what's required by uh, CIPA and COPA and all the federal laws. Uh, so we have Facebook open, we have Twitter open. Uh, we allow teachers to use these as teaching tools uh, and not redact them from uh, uh, from the from the student's perspective as far as students can actually use these, teachers can actually use these for highlighting their voice, highlighting their um, initiatives uh, each other, uh, developing school culture, developing school community. So our kids uh, will all talk to, to these points and have talked to these points around having the access and opportunities to do a lot of different things that they otherwise wouldn't have had uh, available without, without having the iPad. Um, it also is preparing today's student for the global connected economy. I mean, as we think of we think about technology and we think about how quickly it move, moves and how quickly uh, programs programs shift. And what we're trying to do is provide our again our students with a device that allows them to be mobile uh, and to allow uh, access to information, access to uh, their their classes anytime, anywhere, as long as we're they're within the, the confines of a uh, of a network connection. Um, even students that don't have access uh, at home or have access uh, wherever they're working on, uh, we provide opportunities that our students can download materials, that they can download uh, content before they leave uh, our, our district where they can uh, connect to the Wi-Fi uh, and then access those materials at home. Um, the other thing is that we're, we're trying to incorporate skill sets uh, along with these technology pieces, not just uh, using the technology as a pr uh, productivity tool or using technology as, a, as a, a bunch of applications. So we're trying to get kids in, in, the, in the scope of, of seeing, seeing that they're, how to try to find the best tool available to meet the need of their challenge or their goal. Uh, so for some, it may be the iPad. For some, it may be a, a computer or a laptop. Uh, so we, we try and provide multiple, um, multiple devices throughout the day. Uh, so that students can pick and choose the best application or the best device that works well for their uh, their their intended purpose. Uh, we want technology to be meaningful and purposeful, not not contrived. Uh, so, for example, if you look at the picture that that's associated with this slide, what you can see is you have learning tools that have been incorporated throughout the past uh, probably 200 years of education, where you see writing utensils, you see paper, you see books, all these pieces. Um, come into play and work great with an association in, with, an, with the iPad. So the iPad is just one other piece that we're bringing into the classroom that teachers and students can have access to and can use accordingly. Uh, so anytime we talk with our teachers or provide professional learning opportunities for our teachers, uh, we, we talk about trying to find purposeful integration strategies uh, and thinking about that idea of uh, the intersection of instructional design and technology. And uh, tools that that meet the need of the the skill sets that you want students to learn. So we're trying to get those uh, those pieces moving forward, uh, uh, and kind of going to my next bullet point around looking uh, new learning paradigms. Uh, the one thing you'll notice when you when you walk through several Grafton High School classrooms is that no classroom is the same. There's no classroom that is designed the same. They're all um, movable pieces within the classroom, so teachers can move desks together. Kids can sit on the floor. Kids can move anywhere they want. Uh, and we also, you know, when you're thinking about your one-to-one, -one, when you're thinking about what device works well for you, you also have to look at your learning space. So spatial learning is important in the idea of you know, we want to create and foster uh, really good, well-designed learning spaces so that kids aren't just sitting in, in you know, in rows uh, and in desks all looking straight forward at an autocratic figure on the stage. We want kids to be able to move around and uh, you know, be mobile. I mean, these devices provoke and should provoke those different types of learning paradigms that we're talking about. Uh, learning around project-based learning, about around digital storytelling, around different types of uh, flipped classroom pieces that we've seen uh, available. Uh, students being able to more present and share and and uh, learning rather than just being uh, consumers of information in the classroom. Uh, students have the ability to learn anytime, anywhere. So these are some of the other pieces we are talking about as far as uh, students having access to information, access to their classes, wherever they are, uh, and wherever they have access to uh, internet connection. Uh, we had a student a few years ago that 
wasn't able to attend a, a study group uh, in in school. There were different uh, different groups, and she was able to uh, FaceTime in. She had to stay home because she was uh, she had some really she was really sick, and she FaceTime in. She completed the project, uh, and she was able to be a part of the um, be a part of the study group and connect to her classroom from from afar, which was pretty pretty powerful in and of itself. Um, another phase we're looking at uh, over the next few years is to begin to phase out uh, textbooks and uh, and the idea of worksheets. Um, a lot of times uh, you talk about going one to one, and and I think sometimes people think of the the iPad as now this digital repository for worksheets, uh, and that shouldn't be the case because that was not really changing uh, the learning paradigm. That's just kind of keeping it static and just using another medium uh, to convey kind of an archaic strategy for, for teaching. Um, and so we try, uh, we're trying to look at ways in which we can use open educational resources uh, in association with the iPad and, and applications like iTunes U, where we can begin uh, developing our own in-house uh, collection of resources uh, and align them directly to our, our current curriculum, which we've, um, over the past two years, we've revised our K-12 curriculum, uh, developed a consistent assessment tool uh, across the district and uh, and now the technology piece is going to be uh, layered on top of that in which we can we can build in digital units and digital course content uh, that teachers can access that students can access directly through their iPad and through iTunes U. So these are some of the new things uh, that are coming down the line uh, around around how we're going to use the device how we're going to bring the device in and uh, and how we want uh, you know, teachers to start seeing the device in a in a in a day to day uh, basis. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, the one thing I've said since since day one is um, apps are great. Apps can do a lot of different things. Uh, a lot of people out there, a lot of whether they're consultants or you hear at professional development, it's they focus a little bit too much on applications. Um, and while applications can be very powerful and can enhance certain projects and, and learning skills, they should never be the focus of teaching and learning. Um, like I talked about before, what I've, what I've seen primarily is, is the, the, the strength of a one-to-one -one program is that intersection of educational technology and instructional design. Uh, good instructional design has to come first, and then the technology and the applications can be layered into that. Uh, it should never be the other way around. Uh, the first time we, we had when we started working with teachers around applications, I had uh, some frantic teachers coming to me asking about, I need 35 applications to teach history, or I have all these apps to teach science. And that wasn't the case. And it was, it, was a, it was a little bit of a backward statement in the sense that, you know, we bring our teachers in because they're the content experts and they're the researchers. Uh, they're the ones that are delivering this, this rich content and, and being strong, strong practitioners. Uh, the device, the iPad, uh, the applications are simply one other tool that we can we can bring kids and teachers to enhance enhance the learning. And so what we don't what we don't want is is just apps ever being the focus. And while apps are important to learn and understand, they should never be the primary focus of. So we talk a lot about how we how we plan good instructional design. And I'm going to talk about that in a little uh, a little further down the the slides here. Uh, okay, next. So going back again to the planning, um, a couple of pieces that I've worked with and I've helped put in place is around uh, a cultural shift uh, in, in thinking. Um, again, this is, this is the first thing that, that district planning teams, when incorporating any type of large-scale initiative, whether it be technology-based, curricular-based, uh, there needs to be a cultural shift and there needs to be a, an openness to thinking a little different around how you're going to um, how you're going to bring these new types of learning paradigms into, into your school. So the, one of the things I touch upon in the book a lot is trust, uh, trust amongst all. Um, and within any, within, within any organization, uh, this is key. Uh, and what I mean by trust is not that you're always kind of looking over your back and making sure everybody's in, in lockstep, but more or less is that, that everyone's talking and everyone's having consistent conversations. Uh, and then there's consistent support from, from all levels. Um, like I mentioned before, this can't be a top-down initiative that comes from one voice, that comes from one autocratic figure, and that's all of a sudden just thrown out. 
uh, a lot of what I do is try and develop uh, collective uh, collective leadership around uh, or collective decision making uh, around different initiatives. Uh, so, for example, the uh, any any type of initiative that we're looking to do, um, what I do is I, I look at our technology based um, personal learning communities that are in within each school to, uh, school building. Um, what, I, what we do in these in these uh, in these cohorts is I meet with um, a different PLC. So we have seven seven buildings, uh, seven different schools. Uh, we have a, a pre K a pre K to one, two pre K to one schools, two two through six schools, uh, seven through eight middle school, and we have our high school, as well as our central office administration. Uh, so I meet with each of these respective cohorts periodically, at least once a month. And what we do is we talk about, uh, initially we talk about our vision and our goals for that building's technology. Uh, so we want to have a kind of a vision that includes all the voices of the teachers, uh, administration within that building so that everybody's on the same page. And no one's coming up to me asking, well, what should I be doing with this iPad? Or what should I be doing with these apps? Or should I be using these apps? Or how can I, how can I use this technology? Um, and so that's kind of have those conversations and we collectively build those those pieces. From there we have conversations around how are we going to support these pieces? How are we going to support the different learning uh, strategies, whether it be uh, learning different apps or different programs that we're going to be using or just different strategies for integrating the iPad into the into the classroom. So we talk about all these different strategies and then we try to provide those those the support through day to day through common planning time which uh, a lot of our teachers have, uh, as well as trying to incorporate uh, it into professional learning options that we have for our for our full uh, full day and half day pull out for, for PD, um, and we also try and do it uh, through digital resources, through providing uh, video uh, screencasts for how tos. A lot of our student led Genius Bar will build a lot of these. Um, so this is a great way again of having conversations, and for me as as the leader of technology. Uh, in the district to get a clear understanding of what all stakeholders are saying around technology uh, and so that everyone is is on the same page and everyone's moving uh, you know in the in the in the direction of our of our overall district vision for technology um, we also provide uh, we've, we've incorporated a lot of uh, optional learning throughout the year so with that said uh, you, you're trying to create professional learning uh, as anyone has worked in a school district, there's, there's never enough time uh, throughout the school year, and, and there's with, with all the other district initiatives going on, it's really tough to kind of get uh, you know, everybody one place at one time. So we try and create different optional professional development opportunities. So what we're trying to do is, is bring a, a kind of that genius bar model into the different schools where um, I can meet with them, uh, have uh, genius bar days at different schools where teachers that have time off or have common planning time can drop by and can work on different uh, initiatives or can help around technology, whether it's through, you know, whether it's Google, whether it's iPad related, uh, any of their technology programs. Maybe they want to build a blog or have a have a stronger web presence. Uh, maybe they want to dabble with Twitter uh, and, and see how that works into their into their professional learning. Uh, so we'll have many of opportunities for teachers to well we will drop in, we'll go to them uh, as a technology department. We'll sit and work with them, uh, you know, for for the time throughout the day. Um, we're also trying to provide us, you know, over, over some help over the summer where we um, where we pr uh, provide uh, optional professional learning days uh, where teachers can come out and it's kind of like a session where uh, teachers can, you know, connect with with each other, connect with teachers from other districts. Uh, we open it up to everyone in our, our surrounding community so that everybody can have a say and everybody can learn from everybody. Uh, we've also put on an ed camp within our district uh, where we had around 250 educators come out to Grafton, Massachusetts in uh, in March, March 21st of this past year. And it was a really great success. And we had a lot of teachers. We had about 30 to 40 teachers from our entire district attend and uh, not just attend, but some of them led sessions and and and, you know, developed developed that um, skill set and made a lot of great connections. So. Um, we've, we've tried to provide optional professional learning throughout the year, uh, opportunities for teachers, uh, and so hopefully that will continue to uh, continue to grow. Uh, the other thing we tried to develop is uh, we wanted to create more. We wanted to 
kind of change the semantics around our acceptable use policy. Many schools have an acceptable use policy, uh, but within this cultural shift, we wanted to create more of a, a different term around that. We just don't want it to be something students accept uh, the, the use of technology. We want them to be empowered and to really use it to their fullest capacity. So we try and promote that along with the trust um, that we understand that kids are going to try and circumvent things and try and uh, you know try and beat our security systems at all all angles. Um, and eventually, you know, those are the kids that I'll hire on my security team someday uh, for a school district. But um, you want to you want to kind of make sure that, that you know you're you're helping these kids through these through these issues. You just don't want them hacking into your system, uh, you know, every day. But you want to kind of uh, interject and, and you know create a teachable moment out of it, and, and so that you can. Uh, help them help them get up get, get them on the right track uh, so we, we try and empower our students with the use of technology uh, and that's not to say that they weren't empowered before they, we just try and uh, you know, give them access to different types of learning and different types of tools that can help uh, enhance their learning and, and amplify their voice and, and what they can do as as, as students uh, next slide so I just want to show you some examples of, of some of the things I've been talking about. Uh, so here's uh, we this past this past January we we currently at, at the time we had every every student had an iPad 2 uh, and and econ both an economic and uh, hardware uh, decision. We d we decided to revise our lease uh, and bring in iPad Air 2s for every every student ninth through 12. Um, so this is part of our setup, and you'll notice that uh, the students there in the middle. Uh, what's happening there is our student led genius bar uh, is is helping a group of girls there get their iPads set up, back up all their data, move all their information from iCloud down, uh, get all the profiles on. Um, so a lot of what we do within school is is help and, and is uh, help help the students help run a lot of our our initiatives as well. Uh, they're not just they're not just helping us make decisions and, and giving us input, but they're actually taking action and helping us uh, support this. So our student led um, our student-led Jesus bar at the high school has been in providing that support and providing a lot of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Plus, they're they're great feedback for us. Uh, a lot of times they'll say, "Hey, this isn't working this this way or this way. You should maybe think about it." Uh, and so they've they've kind of gotten a, a sense of professionalism uh, that's that's almost come natural with having a course like that uh, at our school. Uh, and if anyone's interested in this course, I have a I have a link I can share later on Twitter or. Uh, somewhere through uh, that just is basically the basic overview of that student-led Genius Bar course. All right, next slide. Uh, we have consistent support. Uh, so one of the things I share with our consistent support is every month we have a community tech night. Uh, so I, I mentioned a lot about how we support teachers, how we support students, but one of the things in technology planning times was left out is is uh, supporting the parents and the community. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not to say that all parents don't know anything about technology or or this and that, but a lot of them are are unsure of how to manage the technology at home. And and what we what I've seen from talking with parents and talking with our guidance departments at various schools uh, is that parents are are you know sometimes uneasy about what's allowed in school, but maybe what's not allowed at their at home and their own personal network. So. Um, so I'm I'm working with ways in which I can I can come I invite parents out to the school once a month, and we talk on different focused topics, whether it's social media, uh, whether it's Google Apps, uh, whether it's student privacy, whether it's data collection, um, how to manage uh, how to manage technology at your home, uh, and balance that with school. Um, so parents are are a key player in 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 one to one technology initiatives being effective, um, along with transparency along the way. Um, Anything we do, any any move we make, it's obviously decided upon by a, a group. But at the same time, um, you want to make sure parents put in that and parents have input in that uh, in those decision making, um, because the last thing you want is is you know parents that are in the dark about different technology or about different uh, tools that you're using that may or may not be collecting uh, collecting data uh, about their students. All right, next slide. One of the things we did this year at our high school uh, a few times is we did a uh, we did EdCamp faculty meetings. So in place of your traditional faculty meeting, here's information and we're telling you all about this stuff. We had teachers. Uh, we used a, a kind of a digital wall here, where we had teachers sign up 
kind of uh, on the spot. We, we told them ahead of time that this was happening uh, and that they could share uh, an idea, share a lesson, uh, share whatever, really. And uh, so we did this a few times at our high school uh, for faculty meetings, and it worked really well. Uh, teachers had the opportunity to attend any session they wanted. They had the opportunity to attend a session and maybe see that it wasn't for them and go attend another session. Uh, they also had the opportunity to lead sessions. So uh, within the, in the scope of an hour for a faculty meeting, uh, teachers got the most out of it. Uh, they were able to connect. They were able to share ideas. Uh, and, and most of the feedback, uh, some of them wanted more time um, and more sessions. So it, it worked truly really well for us. And again, it's just another way of, of building a different, building a culture within your school district uh, that includes all the voices, that has, a, has, has the lead and the uh, focus around teacher voice and what teachers want, um, and not just telling everyone what they need to learn and what they need to do, but uh, allowing teachers time and having collective input uh, to really lead these, lead these initiatives. All right, uh, next slide. All right, so this gets more into, you know, once you've kind of developed a plan, once you've had uh, input from everyone, developed, uh, you know, different professional learning paradigms. Once you put your support system in place, um, you know, the next thing I, I always try and do is, is try and think about how this is directly impacting student learning. How is the iPad the right choice? How is the Chromebook the right choice? How is the laptop the right choice for student learning? And how is it really impacting them? Um, and the answer is it's, it's not any one device. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a multitude of devices and a multitude of of learning, but ultimately it comes back down to instructional design. So how are we designing, how are we in, in designing our instruction uh, and incorporating different tools that wh whether they be technology based or not uh, to convey different skill sets? What is the integration strategy? How are we bringing in that tool, whether it's a technology? How are we teaching that application uh, and how much time do we spend on it? And then going into leveraging the physical space. How are we looking at spatial learning design? And how are we looking at how we move our classroom around? And how we incorporate all of the physical pieces within the room to really impact the learning and, and provoke new learning paradigms, but also use the, de use the device to its full potential. And finally, how are we assessing the impact? How are we looking at, as ourselves as a teacher, that maybe that application worked right? Or how does that, that application uh, improve improve student literacy throughout. Um, so this is a this is actually taken directly from uh, you know a workshop I do around instructional design and looking at ways in which you can uh, help teachers get to understand and have conversations about what in, what a good instructional design is across different content areas. So we go into uh, several questions. Uh, the first question is uh, it's pretty basic. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Um, so again, just looking. So I have teachers basically have a conversation around what is your instructional design process for integrating technology. So this this conversation and, and a lot of them, are, you know, I think it's the first time they've they've thought about this or really kind of focused in on it because it's it's kind of like you have your curriculum, you have your skill set, you have your goal, what you want to get to, but then how are we layering in the iPad? How are we laying in different applications to meet those needs? And so that's some of the questions in which teachers can begin to explain. Uh, their process. I always use an example that I, I used within my English class where uh, we didn't have iPads, but we had one-to-one uh, -one laptops. And so what we what I would do is I was looking to have kids get better at, at writing more concise um, concise sentences um, uh, in using incorporating heightened vocabulary. Uh, so I wanted I wanted students to become you know better introductory paragraph writers, better concise writers, really getting to the point and not just using uh, lofty language that just stretched on for days and days and days, and having them really focus on where they want to get to. So I decided to, that's that's a skill. The end outcome was I wanted students to be able to, uh, you know, write effectively using concise sentence structure and heightened heightened vocabulary. A lot of vocabulary the words we were we were using and they were being assessed on in, in the SATs. Um, and then I applied something like Twitter, where I had kids write those sentences or ideas in 140. Uh, 140 characters. So they could write those sentences, but they were only limited to 140 characters. Uh, and so that was a way for us to refine uh, vocabulary and make the idea of learning vocabulary words in, say, your junior year a little bit more exciting and enticing uh, than, say, just 
reciting, uh, writing them down, writing the definition, coming up with a sentence, and then taking a quiz on that, on that, um, uh, on those vocabulary words. So that was just one thing where I was talking about leading, leading with the uh, the skill set, uh, and then bringing in those those um, those technology pieces or applications uh, later on. All right, next slide. <clears throat> Uh, this is a big one. Uh, the next phase in what we're talking about is then once we have those components in place, we have the tool, we have the technology, how are we using that technology to transition learning from a passive experience to an active creative experience? So how are we giving kids ownership of their own learning? How are we allowing them to uh, create create their own learning with the device uh, and, and apply those skill sets? Um, what I see is a lot of a lot of consuming through these devices, but the the creative potential is uh, is, is really, really, uh, it's really expanding exponentially as far as what students can create the, right through the right through the iPad or right through the Chromebook. Um, so that's what we uh, the next phase in which we look at. Uh, next slide. How have you remixed the physical space and leveraged technology to create active learning spaces? So this again looks at more of spatial design uh, and how teachers are are incorporating that aspect into into the learning strategy. How are they positioning the rooms? How are they allowing kids to access the space themselves? Uh, sometimes we walk around and see classrooms where kids are out on the floor, so kids are out videotaping something, they're making a movie, they're storyboarding, they're conducting interviews, they're collecting data. Uh, so they have this mobile device, they're using it within the context of the lesson, but ultimately uh, this is an instructional design process and how you bring the iPad into the classroom. And next slide. And then finally, how do you know the technology is impacting student learning? So as a teacher, how are you how are you showing a baseline data point that says, you know, this is this is where all my students are in a certain area? How are they growing as a result of whether it's the technology uh, or a combination of the technology and the different tools that are being used uh, or applications? So uh, for teachers, we working we haven't really got to this many point yet on an individual basis. This is more of a uh, more qualitative uh, data analysis at this point. Uh, but down the road, get to basically quantify some more pieces and see how different pieces of technology are directly impact, uh, direct, directly impacting uh, student learning. Uh, and then next slide. And then finally, what we do is um, in in this workshop, we have student, st teachers do a prototyping session, um, and basically they're they're kind of going through uh, how they would if they could basically build their own whole entire classroom. Build all the lessons, build all the technology into it. What are you teaching? Uh, what are the what are the learning outcomes, and how are you assessing it? So, kind of looking at the entire instructional design process, and then what we have teachers do is is basically build their own classroom from the ground up and prototype what that would look like, and, and collectively come together. Uh, and it's amazing what you see. You get some really great ideas. You get some really cool, um, uh, really cool outcomes what teachers can put together uh, when kind of giving their ultimate wish list of of what they would want their their learning space to look like, uh, the components they would want in it, um, and then kind of going into what they're teaching and how how they're assessing students uh, student learning, but also assessing the impact of the technology. Okay, and uh, one more slide. <laughs> and uh, so what's next? Uh, obviously, we know Google, one of those one of those uh, devices on there failed pretty miserably. I I tried them out. I was an early adopter of Google Glass. Uh, it didn't work so well, uh, but I have the watch on now, and I'll say it's it's it has potential. I think the interesting part we'll see is when uh, every student is wearing them in our classrooms, when learning becomes even more personal than it was uh, when the iPhone came out. Um, so that's something where I'm kind of always constantly trying to look at what's next, and you know I always get um, I get I get I get teased lightly about having to have all the the latest and greatest and the newest gadgets, but at the same time. I, I always, I kind of say it's part of my job. I have to be ahead of the curve, and one of my life is ever getting behind the curve and not knowing what's what's cool or what's trending or what's happening out there. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of what I do with these devices is I, I look at them and I see are they, do they have an impact in the classroom? Some, something like the Apple Watch. Where's where's that gonna fit into the, into the uh, the grand the grand spectrum of, of K-12 education? Uh, does it have any place at all? Um, will it just be another disruptor, or will it have some valuable impact? Um, same with something like Google Glasses or or uh, virtual reality. Um, there's a lot of different things where I'm always trying to look at what's next, and 
and where where that next uh, that next shift application is going to go. Um, and it may not even be a device. I actually, I hope it's not a device. I actually, it's it's more of a philosophy and and a different culture around learning uh, in in America as opposed to just uh, uh, kind of the, the overbearing uh, focus around uh, testing uh, and and, <clears throat> and standardization. So what we're looking over in the next few years is uh, is we're looking to uh, oh Mitch is up I must be out of time. <laughs> no, go ahead. Okay. Finish. Okay. You know, you're summing up. All right. So yeah, just saying. The next three years, uh, uh, we're looking to. I have the word eradicate up there, but it's kind of. A, but, uh, we're trying to move beyond textbooks uh, and try to have a district that doesn't incorporate or purchase any textbooks uh, in the next few years, using primarily uh, open educational resources. Uh, we're looking to expand access down to our uh, K through eight levels. Uh, I didn't talk too much about our K through eight levels, but we currently have. Uh, 100 Chromebooks and 40 iPads at our middle school. Uh, every classroom in our, our two through six, two our two two through six schools uh, have uh, six iPads per classroom. Uh, uh, they all have mounted projectors and uh, and the ability to uh, uh, project wirelessly from their iPad to their uh, to their laptops using Air Server. Uh, and uh, so we're looking to increase the access of, of, of devices uh, at those levels, not looking at a standardized one-to-one, -one, but looking at um, a more diverse array of platforms, Chromebooks, uh, iPads, uh, and, and uh, PC models. So we're giving kids a, a variety of those, of those uh, tools. Uh, we're very much interested in iBeacon technology and looking what that can do. We've started exploring some, some, uh, some beacons in the high school. Uh, if you don't know what iBeacon is, it's if you ever go to the Apple Store and uh, you all of a sudden, if you have the Apple uh, Store app on your phone, you get an alert that says there's a, a sale. Actually, there's never a sale at Apple, so that would be impossible. But mm -hmm. if you see something around the lines of they have a, you know, new Beats headphones uh, happening, uh, that'll pop up on your phone. So uh, there's a lot we can do with iBeacon technology. Um, I've always said, imagine, imagine all of your students coming in the first day of school. Uh, their beacon hits hits the student's iPad, and all, all of a sudden, all all course materials are immediately downloaded uh, to that student iPad. Um, so there's a lot of personalization, a lot of access uh, points you can you can work with that. Uh, we're going to so I'm assuming. So I'm assuming that if yeah. it, if a superintendent came to you and said, um, the district next to us just a, just started a one-to-one -one initiative with iPads and we want to beat them, what should we do? You really wouldn't be too particularly happy with that question, right? I'm sorry. You, you, it, it got cut off there for a second, Mitch. I, okay. You, so if that? a superintendent came up to you and said, the district next mm -hmm. to us has one-to-one -one with iPads and we have to beat them, what should we do? That would not be a great question for you, right? <laughs> no, and I'd have to somehow kind of quickly uh, feign interest in the in the question and, and try and develop an answer because uh, it, it's it's really not a competition. Um, and like I said initially, it's, it's, it's more of a the reason why there's a roadmap is that when you, you put in your Google directions, it gives you several options based on traffic, based on all these different variables. And so that's how that's how a lot of these technology initiatives have to roll. Uh, the economics, whether it's private, public, um, you know, parochial, there's there's a lot of different variables, and you know that's a whole other conversation. Um, it's it's and it's, unfortunately some schools do that, um, or they yeah. look at neighboring districts and they say, well, why can't we be them? They're doing this. Um, you know, and, and sometimes my answer is, you know, be more confident in what you have. Be more confident in your program. Um, you know, I've, I've heard that a lot, but I've, I still think Grafton is the best. So, um, you know, if anybody wants to try and beat us, they can. But uh, in, in my mind, we're, we're doing the best job every day for our students. So, so I would say that, that it's the, a better tack would be to set the instructional goals for the students. That would probably be the first, the first thing. Um, second would be how you're going to go about fulfilling those goals. Third might be the apps that allow you to fulfill those goals in the way you want to. And then last would be the hardware. Yeah, uh, at some point the hardware has to maybe come a little earlier in that conversation. Uh, and that just goes back to uh, how are we supporting the teachers? Uh, how are we supporting the teachers with using that hardware, iPad, Chromebook, laptop, bring your own technology to, uh, platform? How are we supporting supporting the teachers? And that's and that's one of the reasons why I don't talk too much about uh, BYOD. Um, I think BYOD's models can work, but I, I I look at it through a teacher lens. 
and also an, an equity lens. Um, and just want to make sure that the all you know all the teachers uh, that the, the BYOD that the fact that maybe three kids have maybe an older legacy Windows machine and you know the rest of the class has MacBook Airs and maybe two kids have an Android phone. Teachers trying to plan their skill sets and use a tool, whether it's web based, you know, they want to make sure that every tool can handle uh, what's expected. Um, so uh, a lot of uh, a lot of that I'm not 100% uh, sure on yet. Bring BYODs. I think it can work. I think it is working for for some schools. Um, but I like the idea of getting at least teachers comfortable with using one device, but having uh, uh, an array of applications and opportunities within that that device that eventually will trickle down to the students. Okay, you know I'm just looking at the time, and I guess, and we're about seven minutes over. Uh, so, oh, um, do you have talk, like, yeah? Do you have a few? Uh, huh? No, I, I. But you had so much to say. But do you have like oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, one or two sentence um, summary for what you'd like people to take away? Yeah, I mean, while you're thinking. Yeah. Okay. While I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, okay, so while you're thinking, I'll just say this is being recorded, and it will be put up on the chatinteractive.org archive pages uh, probably within the next week. Um, and actually, we have a few more that we that we want to put up also. So now I'm going to hand it back over to you. What are the you know one or two sentence uh, recap that you'd like to give everybody? Well, I'll, I'll say this: it's it's not about it's not about the device or the applications. It's 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 about the the thinking and culture around a school district and the capacity for what it can do when bringing in technology. Um, and I think that's what I kind of want every school to, to take away with, uh, that it's more than an iPad, it's more than a Chromebook. It's about um, that shift in thinking, uh, thinking a little differently, thinking not so much like the neighboring school districts, but thinking how differently it will work specifically for your school district. Um, or your classroom, or your your specific school. So. Okay. Well, thanks, Andy. Uh, There's a lot of a lot of real, uh, really useful information uh, that, that today. Um, every time you get on, I learn a lot. So thank you very much. That's good. And um, and for everybody else, we're, we're going to be talking about grades on Thursday. Um, not just uh, A B C D F, but how do you use feedback to uh, to drive student learning? And that'll be uh, four o'clock on Thursday. Uh, please, uh, please join us. And this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm signing off for EdChat Interactive. Andy, um, until next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks, everyone. Take care.